and welcome to um, the third video in this mini program. In this video, I'm going to give you a simple tool to build great sequences with, because if you're into melodic or neoclassical rock, you've got to uh, not only master uh, or know about uh, classical sequencing, uh, because this is the very essence of this style of music. In fact, without sequences, you wouldn't be able to recognize classical baroque music as that. It is a core trait of that style of music. And to become a great guitar player and composer of neoclassical and melodic rock, you must not only know about, but also master the creation of sequences and how to sequence sequences. And as we'll talk about in another video in this mini program, how to sequence chord progressions. In classical music, you have sequences working the melody, you have sequences uh, working where the melody goes and how it evolves. You have sequences determining what chords are played and how these chord progressions develop. You even have sequences determining uh, how the bass line goes and how other instruments behave. So to become a master of creating and developing sequences is really how to, number one, develop your own unique uh, style um, because you, you develop your own favorite uh, sequences. And number two, it also shows you how to be a great composer. Um, in the Neoclassical Academy program, you will find a complete tool that you can use to create, modify and develop your own sequences easily and it really is a tool meaning uh, you don't have to practice anything to use it it's made up of a lot of li little easy sub tools that when combined will make it so easy to create advanced sequences that sound great and today i'm going to give you one of these sub sequences so to speak uh, so you can get started right away i call it sequencing the sequence you take any sequence of notes and then you move them around using a sequence uh, so let's take a well-known one that you might be able to play already. First, I'm going to show you or just play the sequence, uh, basically. And then I'm going to move it around using another couple of sequences. One of which is the same as the one I just played, the first one. So I'm going to sequence the sequence by using its own sequence. <laughs> and then I'm going to, to take that two-level sequence that I just created and sequence that uh, with the first sequence I used. So I'm going to sequence the sequence with itself and then use the third sequence to sequence that sequence. Are you confused? You won't be after a couple of minutes from now. This is an example of how you can create something musical by using a systematic process. Instead of saying, well, dude, you've got the skills and you've got the tools and the arpeggios, now go create something creative. Um, why not, instead of using that approach, why not figure out what it takes uh, and, and instead of relying on coincidence to make us great guitar players and composers, why not master the craft first and then we have a ton of tools so we can create anything we want rapidly and then we can start talking about that last level, which is really an art. So let me uh, do the three level sequencing first here uh, and then let's have you do something also. The, the, it's really a simple concept, so if you really focus in here, you can get it uh, really rapidly, but it can be quite confusing when I explain it. So please see if you can follow me here. We take a simple sequence. Basic, classical. Sequence like that. And then let's, uh, the, the most common way of moving that around is just going through the scale shape. So if we have the A minor scale here, so on. Uh, then we can move the scale, the, the sequence, up the, up the scale there, or we can move it down, and so forth. And in case you don't know the sequence, we're in the 5th, the 7th, and the 8th fret, uh, with the 1st, the, the ring finger, and the 4th finger there. And then we go 5th fret, 8th fret, 7th, and 5th again, 4 notes. And we just take that little melody and move it around. Uh, and that's the sequence. And so instead of just moving it through the scale shape, we can take a sequence like and move it using that. So instead of just going, we're going to take a sequence like uh, and move, put our first finger on those notes of that sequence and then play our little uh, sequence on top of that. So let's just say 
just for an example that we are going to use that's our bottom line sequence there behind this sequence and we're going to use these steps and move our sequence by using those instead of instead of just using it uh, moving through the scale so we had those were the first two notes so I'm going to put my first finger on that first note and go then this was the second note in the sequence I'm going to play my other sequence on that so that's the first two but then I'm going to jump down to the seventh because we have this basic and we've just played now we need to play seventh eighth so we're going to go and then eighth then we had fifth and seventh in our little so we're going to play fifth and then seventh and then we had still still following that and the last two notes were fourth and fifth so I'm going to put my sequence there and then fifth so now I get So, it's a sequence following a sequence. This is also following a sequence. That's just the most basic and simple sequence in the world. It's just scale steps after each other. So now we have a really nice combination of sequences there. What we can also do is put on one more level and then sequence the sequence with its itself. So, instead of moving it we can use the same sequence to move this around. So we're first playing the sequence there, then there, and there. So we're going to go with our first finger. This is the sequence being sequenced or moved around by itself. So you get me? This is just the basic sequence we're using to sequence this. My first finger plays the same little lick or sequence starting from those notes. So and that's a little piece of a melody there or a little composition. And then we can take that and then say, let's move that sequence around using. You get me? So now we have a new, uh, we have sequenced our first sequence by using itself, thereby creating going from this to having. So that is now our sequence that we're going to move around using another sequence. I hope this makes sense. So this is the sequence. And we're going to move that around using... So I'm going to start on this note, which is the first one in the basic sequence, and then go... And then uh, the next note was up here. So now we have... Now we're going to take... I'm going to start there, and then I'm going to move to that note. And then we have these two notes, so I'm going to go and then start here, and then we have let me just play that just a bit faster here, so. That's the basic sequence, and this is the sequence that we're going to move around using that basic sequence. I'm just going to try it again. No. So quite complex because we have three levels of sequences working here and when you start trying to uh, combine and uh, move around all sorts of little ideas like this things really start developing and of course you can do it on four and five levels what we took here was a rather large sequence that, that ended up becoming our sequence but you can have shorter sequences like just three notes that's just a, that's one sequence you can move that up the up the scale uh, notes
so that's the sequence, and you can try to sequence that using a. So it's, it goes. Uh, oh, sorry, it goes. And we can sequence it with itself. So this goes up three notes, right? Right, and then you take. If we're just following the scale shape here, we would go. That would be that sequence following itself. Hope you get me. And then we move that. We stop on the second note and just go up the scale. Or just and so on. A really good exercise there for your left hand. Um, so now we've sequ sequenced the sequence with itself, and this is this is it. And then we can move that around using our. So I'm going to start there. That, those those two notes, and then. And then those two notes, and then let's just do that again. Sorry. <laughs> that was completely wrong, but <laughs> but anyway, um, I hope you get my point here. Um, this is so good that it, it pushes you out of what you're used to playing. So you can even you can see me here. I'm just uh, trying to cope with what I'm what I'm creating. So you'll come up with a lot of different great stuff, and then you'll just sit back and say, "Okay, I need to practice now," because you need to to get those new sequences that you just created in like two to three minutes. Uh, you need to practice those so you can get them up to speed. Now, uh, music isn't just sequences and systems and math and rules, but I like to find methods and, uh, and strategies that will make me come as close as possible to the end result. Instead of learning a bunch of basic tools, which is cool, but uh, like chords and scales, and then hoping that you will be inspired enough to come up with something interesting uh, when you solo and when you compose. Instead, why not see how far we can go by using these systems and methods and really learning the craft for real. In the end, it's your ability to hear what you like the most and then to pick those things out and use them that's going to determine your level of genius and level of creativity. If you have a system uh, that you can that that can generate literally thousands of of ideas for you so that you can just sit back and choose whatever you like instead of first having to work really really hard to generate the ideas and afterwards being reluctant to throw away uh, those ideas that you've worked so hard for then why not use a system of little easy methods to help you generate idea after idea so that you can number one choose the idea that you like the most and number two change this idea and reshape it so that uh, it, it becomes yours and so that you add that extra level of creativity. This will enable you to create entire compositions rapidly and shape your own playing uh, because you get to pick and choose and develop your own sequences in a fast and easy way. Today I gave you a couple of sequencing methods from the system, or just one. In the program I'll give you a complete toolbox and a process that you can go through to, to uh, quickly develop new sequences and ideas so fast that it will blow people's minds. In the next video I'll show you how you can how you can sequence chord progressions, really, and how you can then put melodic sequences on top of those uh, and create entire classical compositions. Now it's time for you to download this video and the extra material, the tabs, the charts. So click the link below here if you're on YouTube, or just click the buttons at my right if you're on my website. So see you in the next video. Bye.